Satu menit. Here. Look through this glass. Now, just so I know I'm not completely insane, tell me what you see. Good Lord. Well, a tremendous panel with dozens of telescreens. And in front of each, a servo robot. They, they seem to be computing something. Yes. I've watched them. They're evaluating data from the screens. Evaluating? Why not? Each of them has a part of a human mind. Remember that? It's against the law to transfer an evaluating circuit from a human brain to a robot. Burkhardt, whoever is conducting this monstrous experiment is operating far outside the law. Have you gotten a chance to look at the data on those screens? No. No, I, I've been afraid to go in. There might be a warning circuit somewhere. If we knew what those robots were working on, we could go to the authorities. Well, I'll risk it if you will. It's worth a chance. We're lost anyway. Okay. Open the door. So far, so good. Come on. Let's take a look at that data. Yes, but don't interfere with the robots. Don't worry. Let's look at the screen. Listen to this. Tests in the 47K12 group with Marlin cigarette pulled 80% using the soft feminine approach. Indications are that an extension of this approach would sell at least 70% nationwide. On the feckled freezers, the direct elevator pitch pulled only 10%. This should be abandoned and a new series of high persuasion elements introduced. Henry, you know what this means? I haven't the faintest idea. I don't blame you. It's crazy, but it fits the facts when I think about it. Do you know who's behind this? Martian. Not Martians, Henry. Advertising men. What? I don't know who they are or how they've done it, but somehow they've taken Tyler Town over. They've got you and me and 30,000 others right under the thumbs. Hypnosis. Hypnosis drugs. Maybe some kind of ray or something. However they do it, what happens is that they let us live through a single day. During that day, they pour all kinds of suggestions and propaganda into us. At the end of the day, they evaluate the results, see how we've reacted. Then at midnight, they wash the day out of our minds. And the next morning, we start the same day over again with different stimuli. No, I, I can't believe that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but think of it. They can run the perfect test and on a whole community. Do you know what that means? Suppose one man learned how to influence people 100%. In a year, he could sell us anything from freezers to political candidates. Oh, now, wait a minute. We're God. guinea pigs, Henry. This whole community is one big test tube for propaganda research. What do we do? Somehow, we get out of this town and get to the FBI. Do you think we can? Yeah, it's worth a try. Come on. Wait. What is it? Look. There's somebody coming down the tunnel. We've got to hide. Quick, behind the circuit box. Shh. Good Lord. It's Dodgen, the head of the agency that does our advertising. Quiet. All right, Burkhardt, come out. We know you're in this room. Miss Horn has informed us that you remember... I must warn you, it's useless to buck us. Come out peacefully and let our maintenance crew adjust you properly so you don't remember from one experiment to the next. It'll be quite painless. If you don't come out peacefully, we'll have to get you. Henry, take this wrench. When I give the word, jump him. He may be armed. We've nothing to lose. Very well. I'm coming after you. Burkhardt. Burkhardt, I've killed him. Wait. Get his coat unbuttoned. 
Maybe his heart is still beating. Henry. What is it? What's wrong? Look. Underneath his coat. Oh, heaven help us. It's a robot. A humanoid robot. Designed to look like Dorchin. Come on, let's get out of here. Wait. What's that? A loudspeaker. I told you it was useless, gentlemen. Who are you? Mr. Dorchin, naturally. The real Mr. Dorchin. What are you trying to do to us? Merely trying to prevent you from damaging my experiment, gentlemen. You can't get away with this, Dorchin. Sooner or later, somebody, the FBI or somebody, is going to get wind of this madness. Oh, now, really, Burkhart, you're quite naive. Now, why don't you be reasonable and let the maintenance crew adjust you? If I refuse, I suppose you'll kill me. That would be quite impossible. Oh? You see, Burkhart, you're already dead. Dead? You're shocked. It's quite true. You and everyone else in this town were killed by premature atomic blast at the control chemical plant. The blast occurred at 7 a.m. on June 15th. That's the last thing imprinted on your mind. That's why you wake up screaming each morning. It isn't true. Oh, but it is. What I and my associates did was take the brain circuits from your dead bodies. We stored them in electrochemical batteries until we had a chance to rebuild the cities and begin our tests. Do you think I believe a, a fantastic tale like that? I imagine you'll find it incredible. Of course, we didn't rebuild everything exactly. After all, it only has to last for a single day. June 15th. At midnight, we turn off the power and wash out the memory of the day. You and your friend Swanson, unfortunately, have defective circuits. You'll remember. Burkhardt, it's no use. We're trapped. Please give up. Not me. Yes, but what can we do? We can make a run for it down the tunnel. Come on. It's useless, Burkhardt. Keep going. It's useless. 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 <laughs> Break out. Break out. It's no use. You go ahead. I'm finished. Look, we're almost at the end of the tunnel. I can see a door. Here, I'll help you. I can. Just a little further. No. Now, here. This door is open. It opens. Oh, no. I don't believe it. I can't run anymore. Come on. Come on, Tony. You go ahead. Look. I'm finished. Look, we're almost at the end of the tunnel. There was I can see a door. On the here, I'll help you. I can. Just a little the further. The ledge dropped away into a chasm so deep they could not see the bottom. The door is open. Beyond was only a glare so bright that their eyes could not stand to look into it. And yet, just beyond the limit of their vision, something towered. Something so huge it was almost inconceivable. Something... Burkhardt. Yes. This is Dorchin. Now, do you understand why it's useless? The great looming figure moved closer. It seemed to take shape now, and yet it was so gigantic as to be unbelievable. It came closer. The glare was partially blocked, and then Guy Burkhart knew that the towering shape was none other than Dorchin himself. You see how I did it, Burkhart? I took your brain circuits and had them reduced so they could be transferred to tiny humanoid mannequins. That's what you are, Burkhart, a tiny miniature of yourself. And this city, this whole experiment I'm conducting, is built on a tabletop. It was the morning of June 15th, and Guy Burkhart woke up screaming. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Man of Distinction by Michael Shara. Being completely unique in this world is not only a mathematical impossibility, it is also a matter of pride. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Tunnel Under the World, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Frederick Pohl and adapted for radio by George Lefferts. <laughs>